Give me a child until the age of seven, and I will give you the man. Our series will take you on a journey of discovery. A journey that will help us unlock the mystery that is concealed within each child's development. A journey that reveals the critical role this development plays in the formation of man. Each adult has not always been a grown-up person. It was the child who constructed the adult personality. In the early 1900s, Dr. Montessori, just as Christopher Columbus had done centuries earlier, discovered a new world. For her, it was the world of the child. What Dr. Montessori had told us more than 90 years ago has lost none of its truth, nor its importance. Almost a hundred years later, we see how much technology and knowledge have increased, but so too have crime and violence. We need no reminding that poverty, homelessness, corruption and wars are still with us in our modern world and everywhere we see ample evidence of new stresses to take the place of old ones. Yes. And the Family Protection Foundation was formed by people just like you and me who were becoming very concerned by the increasing problem of, of juvenile crime. Yes. And we felt very disheartened by the fact that no matter what the experts, the, uh, the police, the social services and so on tried to do to put the problem right, it just seemed to be getting worse and worse. And then it, now it seems to have almost overwhelmed us and with still no practical or workable solution being put forward by the establishment. I mean, um, legislation to increase penalties for crimes is uh, closing the stable door after the horse is bolted. And it seems the best the experts can do on this is to try to find solutions to symptoms without tackling the real cause. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm um, the president of the Family Protection mm -hmm. Foundation mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's my, my position is, is education mm -hmm. as, a, as a former high school teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, the, we see the cause of, of the uh, juvenile problem as, um, well, the main cause is the breakdown or disintegration of the family unit right. with um, the uh, loss of um, community and, and national spirit. Yes. Now this has had a profound effect on the self-confidence um, and self-esteem of our young people. Yes. And yes. we see the, um, the juvenile crime problem as a cry from the heart of a disaffected and, and alienated youth. Yeah, Mrs. Dyker invited me to come and see what the school was doing. Right, and what was your impression when you came to visit? Um, I was absolutely amazed and, uh, and actually delighted with, with what I found because um, we see the, uh, the problem uh, with, with uh, youth today as um, the, the fact that, that the authorities are going on the wrong track. They're, They're going along, the child, yes, basically. Yes, they? because it's really only the family that knows what's best for the child. Yes. And it's only the family that can give the child the individual attention yes. that every young person needs. Yes. And any attempt by the state or education system to solve these problems is, is doomed to failure. Yes. Because they have to um, treat or just make decisions uh, on the group 
Yes. And the group doesn't exist. Yes, yes, that's right. Not so, ever. so when I, I came into the school, um, I saw that every child was treated as an individual. Absolutely. So it's like an extension of the family. Yes, yes. Um, certainly with the uh, technological age that we're in at the moment, uh, more of what you can achieve rather than what you know and who you know. So, and if they're confident, um, what is making it? Anyway, if they're confident, they're well-rounded uh, individuals, they, they respect society, uh, the environment, and they assimilate very well with any group of people that they're in um, because of the respect that they've, they've learned. It is true that the world has become fast-paced and competitive. It's for this reason that it's now more important than ever for our children to emerge as self-reliant intelligent, motivated and caring people. The Montessori environment recognizes this and through its unique but proven approach to education offers children the chance to develop to their full potential. Because of the structure of the Montessori system, I feel that I've become a more independent person. Um, that's probably due to the, to the actual method of teaching, which has helped me to help myself. So um, I also feel I've become more of a confident person, so I'm able to perform in front of people. Um, due, due to being able to practice in my own time in front of fellow class members. I, I remember vividly one night um, where there was a parent meeting and we had a few performances. I remember Jared played the entertainer on the piano and then after him I played, um, I played Memory. Um, I, I remember that was, that was great. Um, I just remember everyone applauding at the end. That was the first professional piece that I played, Memory. In, probably the first, first um, concert environment. During the early years of life, an astonishing phenomenon takes place. Children learn to function independently, to manipulate, to walk, to talk, to think and to direct themselves through their own will. Dr Montessori wrote, the most important period of life is not the age of university studies, but the first one, the period from birth to age six. For that is the time when man's intelligence itself, his greatest implement, is being formed. So, why should a child of three start at a Montessori school? For two to six year old children, mobility is one of their most prominent characteristics. Dr. Montessori discovered that children learn through movement. When children start at a Montessori school at the age of three, they need to be mobile. Montessori understands that by doing, the children learn with their muscles. The work they do establishes itself in the muscular memory. These young children absorb a great deal of information in their first days at school. They are shown how to greet someone. How to move through the room.
how to sit. How to prepare for lunch. How to prepare to go outside to put on their shoes and the use of the toilets. We show them how to use the toilet um, generally fairly early in the day. Mm -hmm. but how to do everything that mm -hmm. they want to do. We are guided by the child in a sense uh, what, where their interest goes. Generally for a very young child that, it, that tends to be the uh, daily life exercises uh, and the, the preparatory exercises. So uh, in those activities the child learns a way of doing things right, right. and as he becomes adept uh, in, in that way moves on to other areas of the, uh, of the environment. And they see how other children are responding and feel, feel comforted by the fact that uh, the environment is uh, very much uh, suited to them, everything is their size, yes. the equipment and everything around them is uniquely prepared for them. So I think they feel comfortable very readily yes. in the environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, they adapt, we, we call it normalisation, um, to a way of doing things. And, and it happens gradually. We show them little lessons, they undertake the, the jobs and they, they, they gradually absorb the, uh, the environment yes, and, that's great. And, and take part in it. it, it it takes um, a varied amount of time. Some children come in the first day and they feel completely at home. Other children, it takes them a little while to adapt to being away from their parents yes. for that amount of time. Yes. And uh, some children uh, take a little longer because their parents are still learning what Montessori is all about. Yes. And generally, we say to parents that there needs to be a harmony between the home and the school environments and the ease with which the child settles into the Montessori environment is determined by the uh, degree of harmony between the home and the school. Every activity in this prepared environment helps the child to develop independence. Each job provides an opportunity to develop socially, physically and intellectually. Yeah, and I guess I was coming from the traditional side where I'd been taught at a certain age, at a certain 
period in school, which, yes. whether it's classified as year eight or year seven. Yes. Whereas perhaps with Gareth, he was more interested, he wasn't ready for the grammar, but he was more interested, exactly. he was way ahead in science. Uh, gave him a good foundation, I think, in that he um, was taught to care for others. Yes. And uh, he felt very close, he makes close friends. He doesn't make a lot of friends, but he makes close friends and he sticks, and that was part of, they were like a little family. Yes and he still keeps in touch with them. Mm -hmm. um, he developed a very good science brain because he was allowed to do what, he was allowed to follow his, no, his yes. head, so to speak, yeah. yes. and he did a lot of science here, and he liked science. Uh, Montessori, having been through a state school system myself, Montessori to me means the, the deal of personal caring, personal attention, the, the style of education, our boys were in the system for something like 15, or rather about 12 years, sorry, 12, 11, 12 years. And the tasks that they had, the background, the, the whole emotional setup I felt was wider than you would normally get in a state school. And in now observing them in their earlier part of their career, I'm pleased with the decisions they've made and where they feel they're going. They're both currently working, looking for experience in the working world and the aspirations that they had at school of I'm going to be an astronomer or a, a forensic scientist and stuff like this have evaporated through the, the need to maybe earn some money, have a bit of fun in their teenage years and so forth. And I'm very confident that when the time is right for them, they'll make the right decision, be that going on to further education or not, but that the Montessori system has laid a very strong foundation for the rest of their lives, which includes emotional, not just purely the educational, which our consumerist society wishes our children to be fodder for the machine. So I'm quite pleased that they won't just be fodder, they, they'll have a life. Yeah, how do I describe it? Um, you know, I teach in a tertiary institution and um, one of the subjects I teach is organisational behaviour and we talk about that the ground rules for who we are is laid down from zero to six. Mm. Anyway, um, Bryn was the first one who came here at four and a half. We sort of fell into finding it by sheer fluke and maybe it isn't, maybe it was meant to be. And he went from a boy who stuttered and stammered to a boy who was articulate and self-confident in one term, okay, and that's back in the three-term days, so it was a longer term than we now have. Um, and but by seeing that, we then put Cain in at three, which was, so Cain's always had that extra Montessori time, and at this stage of their life, they are unique and different people, and that's always the case. But yeah, they. they it's affected them and it, I, I say Montessori is a positive education system that allows that, that allows the child to develop at their own pace. I mean nobody can tell a child when its teeth are going to come through and when it's going to walk, okay? Absolutely. And that's what you're told when you're a new mum, you're going, it will all happen in time. Yes, yes. And then when they go to grade one, which ours didn't because they came here and were here before grade one, when they go to grade one or wherever, suddenly people born at different ends of a year have to behave the same way and have the same and do the same thing at the same time and and our individuality and who we are goes yes. and and then we wonder why we have people who can't think for themselves yes. <laughs> when we take their ability to think away from them with their education system which doesn't allow them to develop at their own pace yes. And so Montessori for me is a positive education system that allows your child to be who they need to be and whether they can read at 8 or 10 or wherever is neither here nor there. It's a whole child development system. And you know, they're naturally caring young men. Um, and that's the combination of the Montessori education both at home and, and here. And the ability to see the real reasons behind things and still cope with it. Yes. The rubbish, per mm. se. Mm. Um, Kane in particular had a bit of trouble with not being treated with respect mm. by teachers in that system. Not all, 
which right. is something they get from which is something that you get here in Montessori mm -hmm. that they are treated with respect and now when he, he loves to come back to the yeah. school and see the kids he said, and, right, and he right, walks right. through and he said it's really great he said I hear mm. little kids say oh, remember that boy he used to come here ah, yeah. he loves every opportunity he gets every day off yeah he, he does he's here. Monday afternoons he's usually up here and he said and great. the school still welcomes him even though he's a yes. past student you try and do that in a public school the jobs offered to Montessori children at first when they are three to six years old encourage development through real work. Today in our two world ordered homes children are discouraged from making a mess and are offered amusing toys. The opportunity for self-development through real work is denied them. In the Montessori environment, the children are carefully shown how to do these practical life jobs and are then able to do them in their own time as often as they need to. The children do not do these jobs for the outcome. They do them to help develop the faculties within themselves. A child's need to work is different to that of adults who work to get the job done. The practical life jobs attend to the real need within the child. Through constructive activity, the children develop, amongst other things, concentration and perseverance. They become calm and happy because their deepest needs are satisfied and this is reflected in all spheres of their development. A lot of what they took with them they weren't aware of no, and true. probably still aren't but every now and again they will mention, they will, they will refer back to to, to something that, that, was, that has come from here, that as I say, has, has stood them in good stead mm -hmm. elsewhere. I've never been a great sportsman, and some, well, one boy said to him one day, oh, I expect you will only jump two centimetres or something. And he said, oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and that was sort of the end Doesn't of matter, it. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit of a conversation stopper, really. So, as I say, and that to me is confidence. Because oh, yes. he wasn't phased, he Absolutely. wasn't bothered, you know, yeah. Because he, both of them know their strengths and their weaknesses, mm. and they're comfortable with them. That's great. My mother in law, father in law, um, brother in law, sister in laws friends, relatives, the whole lot were saying what's going to happen when they leave Montessori and they have to, have to survive in the real world. <laughs> hey, I've got the news for them. They do not ask that question anymore. They know how they fit in. They are fitting in. Yes, and yes. Um, I, I just, I, I must apologise if I sound like a boasting father, but my oldest boy is a lead guitarist of a rock band called Exogen. Um, mm. He's... Um, that the younger boy has is, uh, is twice represented the state of baseball. Um, yes. So they're mixing with people in the real world. Um, and uh, this is the real world because there's not put, an, uh, put under pressure um, right. unnecessarily. The pressure is within them. Absolutely. They are yes. quite competitive in their own way, yes. but it's not forced upon them through whatever system that they're in. This yeah. system allows them to be competitive if they want to be. If they don't want to be, they can yes. be themselves. And that's, that's right. the beautiful part about the school, they're themselves. And they're fitting in in the real world, as it were. One, one was glaringly obvious when Jared was 16, uh, 
sorry, no, he wasn't, it would be 15. Yes. Um, he was invited to go to a cricket match um, with my uncles, uh, sorry, my brother-in-law's, his uncles, and my niece's uh, husband uh, was uh, uh, an officer in the RAAF, and, and he happened to be sitting with Jared, and the others went off, and, and Jared sat with this chap most of the day. And he paid me the nicest compliment um, when he brought uh, Jared home. He said, well, he said, uh, Jared, he said, he can talk on any subject. He says, and, and, and to me as an officer in the forces, he said, uh, I've got to say, I was really impressed. Um, and then I explained to him about Montessori and uh, he hadn't heard of it. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe he might be taking it on board. But I jokingly uh, said to my friends that it's like the child's liberation movement. You know, mm -hmm. that was that time was the PLO and the yes. other uh, liberation movements. I just said it's like the child's liberation movement. They are mm -hmm. um, encouraged to be themselves mm -hmm. um, from a very early age because that is what they're going to have to be themselves yes. when they're an adult. I feel very positive about the environment that she's in. She seems to be having a lovely time. She doesn't want to go home at the end of the day. She wants to stay here and play all day. <laughs> well, that's a reflection on me, I shouldn't say that. No, no, because I went through that too. So. And um, just little things that she does, she tends to, I think she's bringing a bit of Montessori home in just the way she does things at home. Mm. Give us some um, examples. They're always very good to, to hear. Um, the, other, the other day, all, it was actually probably only about two weeks after we started mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. um, I put, I put aside in her little drawers on her table a, um, a set of um, Little Land um, alphabet exercises, which yes. is just drawing lines and different things. Yeah. So there's basically A to Z, so there were 26 pages. Yeah. And she'd actually noticed in this particular day, and she took them out, and she put them at the back of her table, and she took the first one and put it in front of her, and she worked through it. When she'd completed it, she put it to the side, and she managed to work through every single one and complete every single one. She was just so Wonderful. systematic. Yeah. I work in hospitality, and like the amount of, I would usually work with about you know up to twenty people, all about my same age. And when they actually have to do something and f mm. get through the job and finish it again, it's just like it never ever happens. Like they get like halfway through or three quarters of the way through or the majority of the job gets done but the actual tying off of the knots at the end and two o'clock in the morning which is when I usually finish I really don't want to you know be picking up the ends of jobs that other people haven't finished and unfortunately I've been trained well enough that I do finish it and finish it on time <laughs> no but the thing you're saying about your work it happens at my work as well I usher at the Perth concert hall and when the concert is finished, we go around and make sure everything is tidy. And the amount of stuff people leave behind, you know, if they eat something, they leave it behind. I mean, if I go anywhere, it's my rubbish, I take care of it. I put it in a bin, you know, it's where it belongs. I put it there, I take it, you know. So it's a good habit that you form from? from? From very young. The Montessori School gives the child spirit space and the opportunity for expansion. There are objects which allow the child who uses them to attain a determined goal. Such as simple frames that enable a child to learn how to button, lace, hook or tie things together. Montessori children love to be outside in the garden. In her writing, Maria Montessori tells us about the spiritual harmony of the young child with nature.
One of the songs that the children sing has the words Work makes us strong, helps us to get along. This is never more evident than this. Every child working, working, working. I've observed in, in my daughter's class and, um, and I was really impressed. I just, um, the whole feeling of the class, the whole dynamics was just really very pleasant. The children were all happy, they were all busy um, and it just, it, just felt, it just felt really good. Mm. She was having a lovely time. Mm. And I was just, because um, it, it was all a new experience for me observing, I hadn't, I hadn't observed before. And um, a lot of the activities I did in Montessori I really wasn't familiar with. So I actually wrote down for my own interest, and so I could go home and tell my husband, the different things that she'd actually done in the two hours that I was there. And I was actually amazed when I looked at my list. It was nine. She actually wow. completed nine tasks from the beginning to the end. Dr Montessori speaks about the day when the ambassador of Argentina, accompanied by the Prime Minister's daughter, visited a Casa dei Bambini, a children's house. It was a holiday, so the school was closed. Nevertheless, the children were in the courtyard playing. They told the visitors that it made no difference that this was a holiday. We are all here and the porter has the key. The door of the classroom was opened and with marvellous spontaneity the children set to work. Besides the various objects the children are guided to use for their practical life, there are many others which lend themselves to the gradual development and refinement of a child's intellect. These include various materials for the development of the senses. for learning the sound of letters, numbers, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Freedom of choice of work and the environment to guide that choice helps the child to develop inner confidence, which is reflected in his or her approach to the world and to other people. I thought it was very good and quite amazing to see how the kids were sitting in their own desks and then walking around and picking their own little jobs and working on them, <clears throat> some of them on an individual basis, sometimes in pairs and sometimes in groups. Well, I think it, it reflects on myself and my dissatisfaction with my education. And I found that although I did very well at school, and I, in high school I did very well, then when I went to university I found I floundered because basically in my high school, what it taught me to do was parrot, memorize, and regurgitate. I was spoon-fed. I was told what was going to be on the tests, what to study. Um, you do this assignment, you'll get this mark. I was very good at doing what I was told. But I found when I got to university, the professors stood at the front and said, these are the books, this is the course outline, you're on your own. And there'll be a test at the end and no one told me what to do. I had terrible study habits, 
because unless I was told what to do, I couldn't do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And it found university very, very difficult. I made it through just fine, but it was very hard. Mm -hmm. And I thought there has to be something better than so the children can learn. See, I was expected to be able to do independent study, which I couldn't do because I wasn't, I didn't okay. grow up doing that. Well, I see the biggest difference in my 11-year-old child who's been here for, this is her sixth year, and I, she's 11, and she's further ahead now than I was when I came out of university. She tells me what she's going to do. She says, don't worry, Mum, I'm going to organize it. we we'll just, uh, this is what I need, these are the supplies I need. Don't worry, I just know exactly what I'm going to do. You don't have to help me, and if I interfere too much, she tells me off. You know, look, Mum, I can do it. So she, she's, she's quite sure independent. of herself. She's self-assured. She initiates. She's a self-starter. I couldn't have done something if I wasn't given permission to do it. And realizing that at each stage there is something that they need and allowing them the freedom to do the things that they're self-directed in a way to do. Mm. And if you're always telling them what to do, that turns off that inner voice yes. that they have naturally. Dr. Montessori remembers the time when the teacher arrived to school late and found the children working with the equipment. At first, the teacher thought that the children were lacking respect for her and the school. Dr. Montessori, however, interpreted the incident as a sign that the children now know the apparatus so well that they could make their own choice. The children did not need the help of an adult to get started. And most importantly, they made their own choice of which materials to use. Dr. Montessori also came to realize that everything, including apparatus, should be reachable to the child. Children develop in a discipline to learn self-control rather than being under the control of others when that control was applied and uncontrolled when it was not. Only through activity the perfection of life can be sought and attained. To repeat an activity is to acquire understanding. To demonstrate concentration and to show the power of the human intellect. The child must be left free to repeat things in order to learn and fulfill the need to accumulate experiences. It is the inner need that compels children to work so long and hard at a particular task. Dr. Montessori also talks about a little girl of about three busy placing cylinders in and out of their containers. These cylinders are of different sizes and have corresponding holes into which they fit perfectly. Dr. Montessori counted the times this little girl with such intense concentration repeated the exercise. 42 times. Then she stopped as if coming out of a dream, looking content. The choosing, doing and returning of the job to its place on the shelf gives the child a healthy mind. Whole activities encourage a healthy mind. Mental health consists of a whole healthy mind. Montessori principles are centered on the individual's needs, not that of a whole class. The ages in a Montessori class span a three-year period. 
The younger ones see what their older classmates are doing and ask for explanations. These are readily given and the instruction is invaluable. For the mind of a five-year-old is so much nearer to that of a three-year-old's than ours. The little one learns easily what we might find difficult to impart. There is communication and a harmony between the two. Children of three will take an interest in what five-year-olds are doing, since it is not far removed from their own capabilities. Three of your questions will be answered with the help of Mrs. Dyker, who has more than 60 years of Montessori experience. She herself, a Montessori child. Why do you not have computers for children in order to prepare them for jobs? Everybody is against it. For the, for the very fact, we also don't have motor cars in the school that your child can learn to drive for when he is 18. Even if I have said to the children, and they all clapped, and they were so happy, the 13 and the 14 year olds, I said to them, I think that you should learn to drive because you still have respect for the traffic. You still have respect. I said, and by the time you're 17 and 18, that you become a show-off, which you will become, you are 120% in control of your vehicle. So then nobody has any worries. Okay. And then they are so good with the driving that they don't even want to show off. But it is all, all in the preparation, you know, when a child is, is anxious to do things, to, then you, you do it, you don't wait for the law. I read in the paper that Dr. So-and-so, Dr. So-and-so, Dr. So-and-so, they say it's bad because they examine the children, they can only focus in front of them, they cannot move sideways anymore. I have been to, uh, I read in the Sydney newspaper that there was a lady who was so pleased because she had actually given, been given a grant to uh, uh, engage a special person in her room because her children were year seven. They had all got a laptop computer and that special teacher was there to teach them to communicate with one another. These children couldn't talk with one another. And she was happy. Mm. We have children who can talk to one another, like normal people. They have a very healthy social life. One little child came to me this afternoon from the baby room and he needed something. But it was so unclear what he needed, I didn't have a clue. But there was another little boy from this room, he was listening to him. And before I had a chance to ask him, tell me again. He said, come on, I know what you want. And he took this little child by the hand and, and so this is what you see all the time. How do you discipline the children if they are allowed to do anything they like? How do you deal with bullies? The, the system doesn't bully the child. Well, the environment is there for every child. If a child feels um, energetic, we don't mind if they go out on the oval. I have been here with an inspector and he was already nervous and shaking and then all at once he spots a child on the oval, he said, there's somebody on the oval. I said, that's right. He said, why? I said, well, because if the child needs a physical, uh, whatever you call it, what am I going to do with him in a room where he disturbs everybody? So if he has a need to go out, He's welcome to go out and he comes back when he's ready to come in. That's, uh, uh, you know. Well, the interest, you measure the children's interest when they have a job. <laughs> then you, you check or, or check, you observe how long they do it. And if they're absorbed, they do it one day and another day and another day and another day. When the child comes and says, I'm going to do this, and he does it all day and the day after. They get something out of it because 
It's only the things that you're interested in that come down as an, as an, uh, in your subconscious memory. I remember having this child in my room and I would go out of my way to find things for him to do uh, that were actually intelligent projects that he would like to do. He likes to do things with his hands, so you have to be inventive. When a child is older, I don't give him something. I, dis I discuss with the child how about this, how we sh should do this. It's totally different. A little child, you can say, oh, look what I've got. The big one, I talk with if I get the opportunity. Well, the thing is, when a child is satisfied and happy, all they want to do is to write thing by everybody. I must say, we do get occasional children who pester somebody because not all children come here at the age of three. You can only hope that the other children are so considerate. We had a boy who came when he was, was he about 12 or 13? I don't want to mention his name. But he was the ultimate pest for everybody. I have never come across a group of children who were so tolerant with that boy. Now, maybe it was four or five years later that he actually said to his mother, and the mother said it out to another mother, and it came to me that he said what he has achieved in the school that is totally due to all these people in his group who have been so tolerant of him. Because there's got to be harmony between the school we still have problems with people who come at three and we ask parents, how do you punish a child? And they say, oh, we don't punish him, we only send him to his room. And we say, that's punishing. We notice that here because a child that gets punished at home doesn't listen to anything until it hurts. And because we are not physical, we have a problem, but the child gets put five minutes in the laundry because he is naughty or he gets a smack for his bottom because he's naughty. He can drive his parents until they do that. So he, they always win. You hear it in the supermarket, Johnny, come on, we're going. A mum can say six times, Johnny, come on, we're going, but Johnny doesn't come because he knows he, he holds out. The mummy isn't going without him, so in the end she comes to him. That I don't understand that a child will be happy and working and friendly and considerate and all, all those things without having to tell him. It's amazing. When I've had people come in here, if you could only quote all the people who wrote in the visitor's book, one lady, she. I couldn't even read what she wrote because it was in Hebrew. And so I had to have a father to translate it for me. And she said her English isn't good enough to express it. And she said, this is spiritual school and all schools should be like that. The child is concentrated. If the work is so interesting that it wraps his interest, you can't make a child concentrate on something. But all the jobs that we have are so attractive they want to do them. Most children do a job for a day. A lot of them do them longer. I had a boy, he was about seven. He loved geography and his favorite island was Madagascar. And then weekend his parents took him, not a weekend, just on a Saturday, took him up and down to Rotterdam. He was seasick on the way back and his captain stopped his ship. <laughs> Anyhow, the next day I can see him, I can picture him in my mind still. And he looked and I thought if Shakespeare could have seen him, he would have, I don't know what he would have done, but here is this little boy. And he said to whomever he spoke, he said, Madagascar is the rot nest of Africa. <laughs> Look forward to our next episode, Montessorian Inspiration, 
when we will be introducing you to children of all ages, including the high school years. More of your questions will be answered.